Hi there, funky people. Garfunkable again with another full feature, and this one is about space, space. specifically space the dimensions. This is a really cool mod. As you can see, there is a ton of things to do and to put together, and you're gonna go all over the universe. This is so cool. You guys gotta check this out. Okay, first off, you're gonna want to have some farms up. So you're gonna need a factory farm for making fireworks and you're gonna also make glass, like lots of glass, and you're gonna need slime box and gunpowder, really important. So uh, be besides that, you're gonna want also to make some uh, white concrete. You're gonna need those for the power conduits for later. So the first thing you wanna do is wanna make the bench you know, here, and this bench is gonna make the rocket myself. scientist. And the rocket scientist you're gonna trade with to get the solutions basically to the other planets up to Titan. It's gonna give you Mars, Ganymede. Ganymede is very important to go to. Next thing you want to do is use these blocks to get life support blocks, which is this configuration. And you're going to also want your breathing uh, air block, which is just basically some iron and a slime block. This is how you make the oxides. You just basically take dirt and you burn it and it's going to give you an oxide. I like to use the bamboo basically in the front because that's going to be easier and you're going to be using lots and lots of coal. So the next thing you want to do is you're going to need to go eventually to the neither and blaze rods and glow powder and all sorts of things. And this is how you get the generator work. You just basically put an oxide in there and it'll light up. So the next thing we want to focus on after you get doing that is to make your clothing. You're going to need lots of wool, gold. These are the configurations uh, that you're going to need here out oh, that little block needs to be up there okay so this is how you make the life the power block you need concrete and this is going to be the life support block these blocks are very very important you're also going to need to make uh, some observers and you're going to need to make hoppers and you're going to need to make this table here in order to get the launch control station which is the very very important thing to launch your rocket this is how you make the engine and the engine with these blade rods rods we're gonna get to the end part right here you're gonna need hoppers and pistons and this is how you make the glass like i said it's very important to make a slime farm in the beginning you're gonna need lots of slime so, so once you have all your materials, you have your rocket ready, you just place it down, it's a little block, and you'll notice here that this is a fuel bar and it's gonna tell you, you're gonna go to the earth or to the moon. So this is just like kind of back and forth when you first start. When you want to load it up, you just take your fireworks and this is the crude, this is the basic rocket. You're gonna just load it up and you can see the indicator telling you hey this is how much fuel you have and it's going to just load right in i suggest two full blocks now you can just sneak and hit the shift to find out what kind of fuel you have and right here this is kind of like a little mini base and this is kind of showing you how i would set things up when you get to the moon you just basically have a furnace and a life support generator and you just use some oxides to get going uh, well, once you do that, you have your little base here. I would suggest using a redstone contraption. This is my contraption here. And um, if you can, try to get the life support block because that'll be much easier in the end. As you can see, it's connected here and the redstone blocks will just close off and give you a seal. Once you close it off, you'll notice that the little light over here, this light support generator will turn blue, indicating that yes, you have oxygen. I'm sorry, And Dave. of course, you, you know, if you don't I have a life support that. system, you just use your oxides. So it will turn blue. And you can notice there, it has full air. So now the next thing, after you get to the moon, you're gonna use your aluminum and the power shards that you find there. Now the aluminum is easier to find, but the power shards are like diamonds. They're kind of really difficult. I suggest looking for rifts in the moon. So that way we can get to the second stage, which is right here, the heat resistant uh, armor. And you're gonna need basically uh, aluminum and other things here. You're gonna need to use a blast furnace to uh, make the 
ingots for the aluminum, a regular furnace won't work. Uh, as you can see here, you, this configuration of items, the redstone and these pistons will be needed for the next stage, which is uh, basically a packing machine. And the packing machine will be used to, to pack powder, gunpowder using a barrel, and that's gonna give you rocket booster. So basically, here's how you put it together. You put the barrel on one side, the gunpowder, and then you're gonna use these redstone machines to manually uh, activate the thing. And uh, the press is also used to make uh, basically sheets of metal. And as you can see, back and forth, you just use a toggle and that will get you your plates or whatever else you're using. As you can see here, this that bar, that orange bar, is basically indicating you how much progress is uh, needed. Okay, so once you get to Ganymede, you, these two items are gonna be very important, the cold and the cosmic uh, shard. You're gonna need these for the suit, which is, this is the recipe for the suits. As you can see, they all require a shard and you're gonna need also to trade with the machinist. Now, as you notice, he's gonna give you an iron gear. That's gonna be able to get you to the press. Uh, if you don't get an iron gear from him, just reset and reset. Uh, eventually, after trading, he's gonna give you either the wire or the gear template. You need both. And that's the, how you make the, the machinist uh, table. Once you have your wire and gear set up, so you can just start pumping out lots of gears and wires. And I use this furnace, this regular furnace, to kind of power everything with the motors. And as you can see, you just put your gold in and your template in on the other side. Like for instance, I'm gonna make uh, gears. You just put it in there and it's gonna make a gear. Either neither a gear, which is not available yet, or iron gears. Uh, as you can see, the regular press will not uh, use uh, neither right and uh, it will use however aluminum to make aluminum sheets you're gonna me make a lot of aluminum sheets and as you can see here the power is going and you have your presses going making different items gears wires and plates you're gonna need lots of plates so this is the second stage here rocket and it requires two uh, power elements a lot of uh, iron and it's gonna use aluminum blocks, a lot of aluminum blocks. As you can see here, this is the second stage. This uses boosters. So you're gonna need the boosters to go to like mercury here. And basically you just take your boosters and your fireworks. And as you can see here, as you load it up, you just use it like the first crude rocket. This is the second stage rocket and you just load it up. And you'll notice the plus four. That basically means that uh, you that's how many boosters that you have. Right now, that's the maximum you can put on a rocket. So that's basically per trip, you're gonna use a booster whenever you go to a different planet. Now, uh, let's go to the other side here. Oh, before we do, we're gonna talk about uh, force fields. This is gonna be used later on in your base. And this is gonna allow you to kind of not have to do the redstone contraption. And uh, villagers will not be able to pass through them. So you'll be able to bring your villagers into space. Here's the diagram for the airlock. And this is also here for the power source, which now you don't need to use uh, oxides if you do the uh, solar one. So let's go over to the other side. Oh, I have a friend now. Hi there, friend. And we're gonna check out this next very complicated system here, which is uh, the third stage and it's the liquid rocket. Now you're gonna need lots and lots of stuff to make the liquid rocket. Um, eventually in the future updates, you'll be able to use uh, some stuff that, on other worlds so you don't have to do so complicated of a setup. But for now, we're using the water one. And as you can see here, there's a large, a different amount of things that we're gonna need before we get into space. And these items here are the space items that when you make their spaceship. So let's take a look. The first thing you wanna do is make lots of copper tubes. And that is right here, the second one right here, that is for sucking up the water. And the third one you're gonna to need to make a lot of is a pump. The pump is very crucial. Next, you need to make an electrolyzer. Uh, some fluid tanks and a catalyzer. 
And uh, this is the catalyzer here. You're gonna need that to convert the water. Here is how you make the uh, added ingredient. And this is very important right here. That recipe that I just showed you is for the set scavengers. And you're gonna need two scavengers because their upgrades are crucial for your next space steps. And they all only have like four different ones. They don't level up very quickly. So now once you have that, you're gonna need your aluminum plates, some more blazes and uh, your fluid uh, rocket. Here's the recipe for the different kind of cosmetic items. And here's the setup for the liquid. So the pump is gonna first suck up the water into this fluid pump. You're gonna need the pump. Now notice the blue side is in. That means the water is going into that side. The orange means it's going out, okay? That right there is the electrolyzer. And as you can see, it's kind of split into two ways. One goes to the oxygen, the other one goes to the catalyzer, which is gonna turn the other part of the fuel into something that uh, that can use. You can see here, it's all connected through the power blocks. The first thing right here, that means water, that's your air bar, that is your fuel bar, and that's your energy bar. So that tells you if it's energized or not. And that goes to the fuel pump and it goes to here the life support generator. As you can see, it's full, meaning that it's getting oxygen. Now, the next thing you wanna do is make sure it's connected to the catalyzer and you're gonna use that aluminum catalyzer to convert that pre-fuel into rocket fuel. And you need a pump and it goes directly into the rocket launch station. And as you can see, the purple means that yes, this is the fuel and you don't gonna need to refuel your liquid rocket very often. Now these items here are gonna be used for your space trip motor, uh, power, and for the uh, wires connecting everything together. So now that you have that, you're gonna need to make the Eye of Ender and you're gonna need to make these Ender Beamer base. You're gonna need to make a lot of them. Uh, you're gonna need to make at least two and at least two of these Starship Beamers. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get beam back up to your ship because you need both to go to a planet and to beam back. Now, you're gonna need to make a package. And this is pretty Care package on the way. Because you take this package and you're gonna need 64 iron plates, 64 gold wire, a display conduit, and an ender beam base. And what you're gonna use, you're gonna use a packing machine and as you can see, I have one already pre-packed, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. You just put it together here, put your empty packing uh, box in there, and you're just gonna put your materials in there. Notice that no just regular materials are gonna fit. You're gonna need to put it in a specific order. Make sure you do your plates first. As you can see, it starts going up, and then you do the gold wire, the display component, and the ender beam base. That's gonna get you your packet, put that back and then you're gonna use that packet on your ender beam base to make your spaceship. Now you're gonna put it in this first slot here. I've already got my spaceship pre-built so it's up there in the space but you're gonna hit that activate button and it'll say spaceship completed. So once you do that you're gonna put your your beamer um, item in there and you're gonna want to make sure that you're gonna have uh, this particular setup for your control colony. Now I'll go over this a little bit later, but this kind of tells you uh, how things are going. You're gonna use tokens in order to trade with him and to get a pet. Okay, so here we are with our little flight buddy and we're gonna go into space. This is really exciting. So you just hop onto the Beamer base and then you hit activate and make sure you turn off any shaders that you might have going on because you're gonna really appreciate that once you get up into space. Yeah, here we are. We're in space and we have our bird buddy on our shoulder. If he flies off, he'll fly probably back on your shoulder. He might take a little bit of damage, but don't worry about it. Uh, this is the only kind of, this is like a little trick here that you can do. Now, as you can see, here's all the planets. I got was Mercury, Venus, obviously there's Earth, there's the moon. And um, if you have your telescope, you can check out, oh, there's Mars. 
Uh, oh, you might have seen that was probably Saturn or something over there. And then, uh, of course, you're gonna also want to go to Jupiter. Behind Jupiter and its moons is Europa, which is gonna be the last update. And you're gonna need some extra stuff. We'll go over that. So. As you can see here, this is uh, kind of a basic setup. You have your life support generator connected with the uh, ray generator, the solar power, basically. And uh, this is going to keep your spaceship running and have lots of air so that way you don't have to die up here, you know, without any air because uh, travel is long. Okay, so you can use your cosmic uh, crystals in and the power home. source and you're gonna wanna make sure it's connected to the engine. Shut up, Wesley. Now, as you can see, the middle console gives you the controls and we're just gonna take a turn around. Oh, yeah, there's Saturn with its rings and there's Mars. And as you can see, you go left, right, and you use the center console basically to, to uh, either stop your machine or to go forward oh, oh look that was probably pluto over there anyways okay let's go ahead and stop our machine here uh, by using the middle button and it's going to tell you hey this is where you are earth and uh if you're able to beam down there's going to be like a um, not able to beam down i should say there's going to be a circle with a uh, line now make sure make sure to before you do all this go up into space you're gonna want to make sure that uh, when you activate this thing, you're gonna want to make sure you have a landing pad. Oh my God! Um, um, yeah. So I, I put this down here because you always get beamed down to zero zero on any planet. Okay. So the next thing we're wanna gonna talk about is uh, colonizing other planets. You're gonna need cryo tubes. I'm gonna get one from here, and you're gonna shift, kind of sneak up to a villager, a sheep, or a cow in order to capture him. Come here, he is really kind of tricky. And you're gonna use them, basically, ah, okay. You're gonna use them in their cryo state to transport them, basically, to other things. You, all you need is a cold tube and some glass to make these really fun objects, and you can just put them out there. Okay, here is the setup for when you're going to want to make a base on a different planet. Uh, right here, let's say you're on a water planet or whatever, and you want to make a dome. So you use a dome constructor, and you want to make sure there's a flat area, at least 20, I think 20 or 30 blocks in all directions flat. And you're going to need lots of glass, at least uh, 10 or more glass. That's a lot of glass. And as you can see, as we put it on there, it's gonna construct our ring here. Just imagine if this was on a different planet. So this is really cool to watch it in action. Uh, it does take a lot of uh, blocks though, so, and it kinda is um, very interesting. Once you have your dome set up, as you can see here, it'll be all sealed off, and then you can start putting life support. I would put the life support uh, like take out the, the builder base and put the life support right there in the middle. That's gonna give you your maximum amount of air support plus some more. Let's go ahead and swim out and, oh, sorry for everybody, come here. Oh, no, it's not gonna come, come with me. All right, so uh, I would suggest, like I said, putting some more on there, but here's a basic setup, it's pretty cool. Now we're gonna talk about Europa, you're gonna need some underwater stuff because, well, you'll see. Uh, you need sponges, you're gonna need also uh, some neither root, puffer fish, and you're gonna need to make yourself uh, basically underwater potions. I would use the eight minute one, which is basically a puffer fish, and then you go with the redstone uh, in order to make uh, everything that you need to go to the underneath side. So this is how you do it right here. And I would use just like an iron door basically instead of um, anything else once you get underwater. Okay, you're gonna also need these transport tubes which is ender pearls and some flint. That's gonna, the one part, the base part is gonna be able to get you under the bedrock. You need to connect that directly to the bedrock basically. And that other part you just saw was how to make the night vision um, mask which is really cool especially once you're underwater but 
Unfortunately, you will need your regular masks on other worlds, otherwise you will still suffocate. The night one is just basically to stay underwater. Now let's talk about Colony Command. Now, right now he's miserable, but once you start making the colonizers happy, you're gonna be able, as you can see, pull out these coins. These coins are gonna give you, you're gonna be able to trade with him. You're gonna need rare coins, as you can see, to get the space cat. Now, here's the space cat. He's really cool. He's kind of hiding out over here. Oh, whoa, he's kind of quick too. And um, here's how you use the transport tubes. You just right on, click on them and bam, you're instantly transported to the other side. Very, very useful. And it's kind of kind of how that's gonna work when you get to Europe. But okay, let's blast off. Here we have our setup and we've talked about everything to have our fuel. And as you see, you just shift down and sneak and you can see how much fuel you have. Okay, so now let's go ahead and blast off. You just hit the space button, don't let down, and uh, let's blast off. Okay, here we go. Uh, any, any moment now, okay, let's see here. Okay, yeah, got it. So, let's blast off. Okay, as you can see, we've got it. And this is always so cool, blasting off the world. You can see the little flame jets as you go up, 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 you're gonna notice that you keep going up into the sky and once you get to a certain level, you're gonna get transported to the next uh, moon and we're gonna go through some snow and ah, yes, here we are on our new world and this is Mars. As you can see, this is the red planet. It's pretty much, yeah, the first time we're coming up here and you're gonna just let go the space bar and you're just gonna yeah, land step off the land now. Uh, you're gonna land on the coordinates that you place. So I would place them at zero zero because later on when you get the spaceship, you're gonna wanna teleport here and it's gonna always teleport you to zero zero. Oh, that's a really cool mountain in the background. Please note, you're gonna wanna have a beamer base, a beamer and a launch uh, control station to go to any planet because you're gonna need them to go back. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck and uh, you're going to die on, on a planet. It's not going to be fun. So let's take a look at the personal Beamer. Now, this is really cool because this personal Beamer, once you trade it, you can basically mark a location. It's one use only and you can come back to it. I like uh, to use it if I just kind of like an emergency situation if you're stuck uh, on a planet. Okay, so let's have a rocket lot station. As you can see, it's gonna tell you how much uh, fuel you still have left, lots, and you're gonna type in your coordinates. Here I typed in the wrong coordinates, uh, but you're gonna wanna put them at the same coordinates that you launch from. And as you can see, let's take a nice screenshot of that. We just go back to Earth. Uh, if you want to go to a different planet, you're going to want to make sure you have your launch solutions in there as well. Okay, so we're back, and as you can see, it goes to the direct coordinates that I put in, which uh, I accidentally put in uh, the wrong ones. But anyways, Oops. we still land back here on Earth. And hey, look, Feather Buddy. Oh, hey, Feather Buddy. Okay, so in order to, like, uh, transport your ship, you're going to want to beat it up and it will give you a box that you can place down later, you know, so once we go back to base here, which is not too far away. I, I like to put my base as close to zero zero as possible because uh, the Beamer one, that's where it's gonna go. All right, so let me go ahead and put it back down. There we go. It's fueling up as you can see here. Uh, this is the inside of the ship and you see the little icon indicating that it's being fueled up because we have it connected to our rocket launch station, which is getting the fuel. All right, so that was it. That's everything pretty much. Uh, enjoy this mod. I hope you liked uh, this kind of mod review, this full feature. Please consider a like, subscribing for more content like this, and I hope to see you guys the funk later.